Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. It's been a few days, but I'm here to catch everyone up with what's going on in the Morgan Le Fay Journal. I believe the last time we were recording here, it was the 16th. Again, at the end of the month, I will do a proper flip through of the entire journal. I came across this beautiful print card. There's really nothing on it. I don't know if someone did this and just donated it to a thrift store, like if they took a picture or if this was an official postcard from something, but it has this dead bird. Uh, there's something really beautiful and somber about it. I didn't want to damage the card or the picture at all, so I just sewed two strips of fabric in, this shiny black fabric, and put the card underneath that. I've added one of the purple leaves to this page and just more ink spots. I went ahead and pinned this cat with the little skull charm into the journal. I love that. I started writing some things into my October Daily Journal from this book I found at the thrift store called The Romance of Arthur. It's an anthology of medieval text. It's all been translated. There is a lot in here about all different versions of the legend of Arthur. There are so many characters in this book. There is so much information in this book, but I did learn some things just by going to the index and flipping back through the book and reading about the little places where Morgan the Fay was mentioned. Here is one of the things that was written. And this chapter was called The Prose Merlin and the Sweet Do Merlin. So I want to read more about that. I, I'm not sure if it is pertaining to a specific work or a group of works. The king sent the daughter named Morgan to school at a convent. She was so gifted that she learned the seven arts and quite early acquired remarkable knowledge of an art called astronomy which she used all the time. She also studied nature and medicine, and it was through that study that she came to be called Morgan the Fay. What I've done with all of these references in my book, I've put an asterisk at the end of these things taken from that particular book, put the page number, and then over in the back of the book, I've got the name of the book and who it was edited by so I can, you know, find it again and read more or refer back to it. And that was October 17th. Ooh, I love this page. So October 18th, we've got this beautiful image here of Morgan. And this was just from a children's book and it says the woods. If you're in the woods as the sun sets, look up. Bats are swooping for insects while owls silently listen for the scuttle of their prey. And even though that's just a very innocent note about nature, the woods at nighttime can be very scary. And I think about people like Morgan in these stories who studied nature and medicine and who were not afraid to go out and gather and, you know, become acquainted with these creatures of the night. Again, I've added trim. I've got some just generic Halloween stickers and things throughout the journal. Okay, here is another bit of text about Morgan from that same book, The Romance of Arthur. This is from the Cantari del Trecento. Uh, that chapter spoke a little bit about legends in Italy. And one of the things that I learned is that a, an, an author's version of Merlin, Arthur, Morgan, all of these people might change a little bit depending on what access they had to different myths and legends. Um, and folklore, you know, stories that were told over and over again. So in different areas of Europe, there might be different versions of the same story, or maybe that story had not made it to a certain region. Uh, so you might have elements in this story that don't appear in this one, or elements that are really similar 
but not exactly alike. So you think, well, maybe they came from the same thing and it just changed as it went through these different regions. This says, when Sir Tristan came to this rendezvous, he was not wearing any protective armor except for a bright sword and the discarded lance, which had been given him by Morgan the Fay, a lance that could kill anyone without a doubt because it had been charmed with an enchantment. I want to put quotation marks here. Now this, again, brings names into the story. Uh, Tristan, and there was Mark in the story. Uh, Tristan ended up being killed with his own weapon. So that is just really, uh, it's a whole nother realm. <laughs> nother is not really a word. It's a whole nother realm of all of this stuff that I would love to know more about but I'm just kind of dipping in. There is so much to this. Nobody can learn it overnight or even in a month. This was just the orange page that had been part of the journal when I created it, and that's printed from my printer. I added some gold paint around that image. Of course, more trim and stickers, and you know I love to go back and add more and more layers. This is an earring, um, a friend of ours, knows that I love crows and blackbirds, and she noticed that the blackbirds appeared in a lot of my guitar paintings. So when she was traveling, she saw a glass blower, an artist who made these little earrings. And unfortunately, this one, I dropped it, and it cracked on the tail and on the beak. So I don't wear these anymore, but I always think of my friend when I see this. So I put the blackbird in here, here is another note, and this is October 20th, about Morgan from this book, uh, The Romance of Arthur. Was Argante a version of Morgan? And that, again, goes back to things changing from region to region and throughout the ages as letters are dropped or added. And this is talking about Morgan. The comeliest of fays, and she shall heal my wounds and make me healthy and sound by preparing for me health-giving potions. So, Morgante is the name that I have found referred to in doing some research online. In the, the text that this is taken from, it says Argante. It's the same person, maybe. Uh, more stickers. These are really fun. This is from a set that I had in just my generic Halloween stuff, and I love adding things like that, all these different layers. This, of course, is an eye, and I love these rays around it. The eye is very symbolic. You see it in a lot of magical illustrations and references to chakras and being able to see things that are beyond this life. There is another one of those adorable stickers and that's the 21st. Here on the 22nd, there is another little wildflower that I picked when Jason and I were out walking, and I put that into the laminator. Um, here's an old book page showing it had all sorts of things in it, everything from weapons to industrial tools to medical instruments. There's a sticker. And then here we are today on the 23rd. This is just an old picture I found at a thrift store. Um, not too old, but a lot of people don't print pictures anymore. And this is Fujifilm. I, this was, I don't know when this was done, but it's just an abandoned truck and a bunch of weeds. So I just stuck that in here. There's another skull sticker and just coffee staining. And again, more text from The Romance of Arthur. The mighty Morgan the Fay, who lives on my manor, whose mastery of magic is manipulated with craft, learned to a large degree from the lore of great Merlin. For indeed, she had a long and lasting love with the crafty wizard, who is known to your country's knights as one of fame. Therefore, Morgan the goddess, rightly is her name, 
Nobody's so wild against her that she can't make him tame. And of course, that is about Morgan. Uh, I haven't really done much beyond this. That was a fun old book page that I found with Edgar Allan Poe. I love Edgar Allan Poe. And I scanned it with a couple of vintage stamps that I had and just printed it on four by six photo paper. But we will get to the subsequent pages uh, soon. I'll try not to go so long before bringing this journal back. I've just been really busy, and again, I don't want the channel to just be overtaken with the Halloween journal. I am putting together some packs, some creepy, witchy packs, and other things. I just, again, have had a lot going on. I feel like I'm in every direction sometimes. Oh, there is one more thing I wanted to mention, and maybe I forgot to bring it out here. Oh, no, there it is. This looks like an oyster shell, so it's not the best example. But in Ireland, um, Scotland, England, uh, the coast of, of Britain, stones that are found that have holes naturally worn into them are called hag stones. And hag, of course, is another name for a witch or an old woman. And again, all these things tie in together. And sometimes it just has to do with being female in this, these really old accusations of witchcraft and things like that. Uh, this is a shell. Again, it's not a rock or a stone, but I do think it's interesting that when they're found with the holes in them, they're called hagstones. Some people turn these into jewelry. Uh, people use them for energy, for magic, uh, for spells. And it just happens naturally over time when a stone maybe rubs against something or, you know, it's caught where a, a smaller pebble or something is rubbing against it in the same spot. There are a lot of myths and legends around hagstones in all different areas of Europe. Uh, one of the most common that I came across was that these were formed by a ball of snakes and that where all of their tongues were, were coming together with saliva, that would create this round mass with a hole in the center. And anyway, that's another version of the hagstone. It has all different names. I didn't realize there were so many names connected with a rock like this. And again, this is a shell, but I did think I would tie that to the outside and maybe I can find a hagstone, you know, somewhere in this area, one that has maybe by the river or something. Um, although really we're not supposed to take anything from that area, but maybe I can find something that's not in the state, state park or whatever, or maybe at least find one to show you. I don't think I've seen a lot of that kind of thing though. I see broken glass mostly and whole rocks. We have a lot of big rocks and there's quartz and stuff out there. Anyway, I'm gonna tie this on here and it just ties in with the rest of the story. Thank you so much for watching today. I will be back really, really soon. Bye for now.